Hello, I'm back. I'm Harish and I'm continuing the problem that I was doing in the previous video. If you haven't watched the first part of the video, go ahead and watch it first and then we will continue here. And what we were doing was representing the state space equations in terms of a signal flow graph. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to go from here to transfer functions. And I'm going to use what is called the Mason's rule. So how do we go about doing this? So this looks like a complicated graph, first of all, but if you look at how we made this, it was pretty straightforward. Given the equations, we have made connections between the state variables, the state derivatives, and of course, the input and the output. So now, I'm going to use a set of variables that I need in order to convert from state uh, signal for graphs to trans functions. So they would be, I'm going to call by m1, which is straight the first straight path to the output. So I'm going to be concerning myself in identifying what are the different ways I can reach to my output without any form of feedback or without going back in direction. So how can I do that? One obvious answer is this straight line right here. I can start from u and simply go through this graph and reach y. Nobody's going to stop me. So that is the first straight line path. So I'm going to go ahead and write it as 1 over 9 times 1 over s times 2 over 3 times 1 over s times 2 over 3, right? Just a straight path, and I'm multiplying all the gains of those paths. Now, what about the second one? There is a second one. As you can see, all these are feedback loops. They will contribute to a loop. We will talk about loops in a bit. But you can also reach y via this path. Starting from u, hit x1 dot, x1, and then skip these two states and go directly to y. You could do that which means that gives, uh, gives rise to the second path. I'm going to write that as 1 over 9 times 1 over s times 2 over 3, which is this 2 over 3 right here, and that's it, times 1. So that would be my second m1, right? OK, these guys are straight paths, OK? So that's, these two are quantities that I need for my Mason's rule. OK, and I'm going to look at loops now. What are the different loops I have? Right? OK, very simple, first loop, right? This is another loop. So let me just write, write it one by one. So I'm con going to be considering this guy. If I need the gains of this guy, it's simply going to be 1 over s times minus 6 over 9, right? What about L2? This guy. It is similarly 1 over s times minus 1 over 3, OK? All right, there is another loop here, which is this loop. x1 dot, x1, x2 dot, x2, and then all the way back to x1 dot. So loop 3 would be 1 over s times 2 over 3 times 1 over s times and then minus 2 over 9, right? So what you have to remember is while considering loops, you have to start at a point, follow the uh, signals uh, through the graph, and then be able to trace back to the same point, which is the definition of the loop. So in this case, I have three loops, two forward paths, right? So, so these are quantities that I would need. All right, so once we have this, we can calculate other variables that I need. I need what is called delta. And then I also need, for every forward path I have, I need delta 1 and delta 2. So we will look into how we are going to calculate these guys, right? So now, in terms of delta 1 and delta 2, they are re really straightforward. So you start off with 1, and then you look at basically the loops that are not touching the forward path. So delta 1 corresponds to m1. So m1, as I said, is a straight line. So is there any loop out of these th three loops, obviously, 
is there any loop that's not touching the forward path? The answer is no. You don't have any loops that are not touching the forward path. Everything is touching the forward path. So you cannot subtract anything out. So you can just plug in a zero there. Delta 2, 1 minus, let's see if there are any loops that are not touching it. So let's remind ourselves, this is M2. This is the second forward path right here. So this loop is touching it. This loop is also touching it. But what about this guy? This loop right here is not touching this one, which means, let me see, uh, this I described as L2. So L2 is not being touched. So 1 minus L2, right? Is that clear? So then I'm going to go ahead and write this delta. How am I going to define this guy? I'm going to start off with 1, but however, I'm going to do this. Start with sum of all the loops in your system, all the individual loops in your system. So I have L1, L2, and L3. L1, L2, and L3, right? And then I'm going to change signs, and then I'm going to take two loops at a time that are not touching each other, right? So I'm going to look at the loops. I have three loops. This loop, this bigger guy is obviously touching both of them. So I don't have to be concerned with that guy. But these two guys are not touching each other. So this is over here. This is over here. So when I say not touching, they don't share any nodes. And the signal or the paths do not touch each other at any point in the whole graph. So in that case, I will have this guy and this guy, which is I have represented as L1 and L2. So I'm going to write that product, L1 and L2. Of course, I'll keep adding, if, if at all, I had more loops, two loops that are not touching each other. But I don't, so I will stop here. This actually keeps going. I could have a minus and consider three loops that are not touching each other. But we do not have a complicated uh, single flow graph that actually asks for it. So I can stop right here and look at these variables. Now, Mason's rule makes it really simple for us. It says, I'm going to call it g of s, which is my transfer function. Obviously, transfer function is, in Laplace domain, the ratio of output over input is simply my summation of over i, mi times del i divided by delta. So this guy is going to give me the final transfer function. All right, so we have shown that this is the Mason's rule in terms of these constituents, which I've defined here, these variables, and we're going to get the transfer function. So let's move on here and then write out for this particular problem that summation over i is just going to have two components because we have only two straight paths, this guy and this guy. and then. We have calculated these guys out, so I'm just going to simply plug them in. All right, so M1, if I multiply this through, is going to give me 4 over 81 S squared. What about del 1? Del 1 is simply 1, so that's easy. Plus, what about M2? M2 is going to be 2 over 27 S times what about delta? It is 1 minus L2. So L2 is right here, which is minus 1 over 3s. It already has a minus, so which means it's going to give me 1 plus 1 over 3s. That's my del 2 right there. The whole thing divided by del. So what is my del? I have to add these three guys together and then plus L1 plus L2. A bit of algebra will tell you the total del amounts to this. 27s squared plus 27s plus 10 over 27s squared. I know I'm skipping a bit of algebra and being lazy and copying it from my notes, but obviously I'm sure you guys will be able to do this. Now, as you can see, Obviously, I can take the common factors, pull it down, and then arrive at the final transfer function, which will be 2s 
plus 2 divided by 27s squared plus 27s, it's going to stay the same, plus 10. All right, so what have we done here? The thing to remember is we started off with these set of equations, the state space equations. We knew how to represent it in terms of a matrix equation, and we call that the state space representation. And then looking at these equations on the state space representation, we looked at the signal flow graph, or we talked about how to go from your input to your output through these states. These links were made based upon these equations, and these loop gains or link uh, path gains are simply the constants from our equations. So once we had that, we had to define a set of variables that we needed in order to use the Mason's rule. So what did we need? We need straight paths. How many ever straight paths we had? We computed that. And remember, while computing all this, it's simply multiplying through the gains. And then we talked about loops. How many ever loops we had? We listed them. And then we went to delta. Here, these are all the, all the loops are individual loops. And in this guy, I'm just going to add all the individual loops and note the minus sign here, plus combinations of two non-touching loops. So we had L1 and L2, which were not touching each other. And then we didn't have anything else. Of course, this would go on if we had a much more complicated signal flow graph minus combination of three, combination of uh, plus, combination of four, and then so on. And then we needed del one and del two, which are one minus basically the loops that are not touching the paths, straight path. Del one is obviously this primary straight path, which is touching all the loops, so nothing to be subtracted. And then del two is this guy, which is not touching L2. So you had del2 as 1 minus L2. And then, finally, we simply use this formula, which is the Mason's rule. What we have done is simply summation of mi's and del i's over i, basically how many ever straight paths you have, over this big del right here. And over here, you can see that I've done the same and arrived at the transfer function. We started off with the state space equation, and then got to the signal flow graph, and then the trans function. During the course of uh, s a signals, a systems analysis, you will see why do we have to do all this, and how it's going to uh, explain to us how we are going to analyze the system, or further down the line, how to actually design controlled systems, which are really cool, in order to make the system do what you want it to do. I hope you got something out of this, and thank you for your time.